Okay, Facebook land, I'm back again. As promised, last month you saw me do snapping twig, a little bit of extension, adding in the quantum Kyushu principles into the Kempo self-defense, both on the base and the extension and partials thereof. So, in continuing that, uh, I thought I'd do something else that's not really in the order of the web of knowledge. However, <clears throat> I just wanted to backtrack that and add in. So I thought today, since I've seen a lot of controversy out there on lone kimono and how to make it work most effectively. So you can be ineffective, effective, most effective. I want to be most effective most of the time to allow for margin and error. So in saying that, I have two different body types again in here, two different people. Because I had some people come back and say, well, yeah, I worked on that person and worked on that person, but it doesn't work on everybody. <clears throat> I would say, well, maybe not on everybody 100%, but I guarantee it'll work on at least 98% of the people out there. So I'll bring in the first person here, it's Terry Tate. So again, from lone kimono, so we know it's a grab. So you know you can control height, width, and depth. If you control two of the factors, third one cancels out automatically. So just from the base maneuver, we all know the base maneuver. But what I see out there, a lot of people are doing it, is that they're just grabbing here, they're grabbing here, and then they're trying to, you know, rev that up. What you need to do is, you need to employ, like I said last time, two-way action. Two-way action is what's going to make it most effective every time. So the first thing he does when he grabs here, even though you can add a distraction like that, if you want to distract it, or just come across the face, without even doing that, just doing the base move as outline, I want to torque. When I torque these points here, this point represents the metal element. This one represents the fire element. You don't need to know all that. All I need to know is that when I grab these two points, there's a point here, a point here, and a point here. When I torque those points, it sets up everything in the arm. The arm sets up everything in the body. That's how it works, systematically. So when I torque this way here and I step back to a neutral, what I want to do is I see a lot of people lacking is they're not using their lower carriage, they're just working on the upper carriage. You want to make sure that you get these and this working in harmony, in unison. So when I drop back to the neutral, I'm then going to rotate. That's what's going to sell, accelerate it to a modified horse. So when I drop back this way here, I'm just breaking it down, dissecting it. When I torque this way here, this one's going to come up this way, and it's not going to do this. It's going to roll into it. So this is rolling one way. That's rolling that way. So in effect, I have this going on simultaneously, and at the same time, this will be moving. A lot of people are ignoring this or not using this. Not everyone, but I see what I've seen out there. And I traveled for 16 years globally, not to impress you, but impress upon you that I did see a lot different styles. And the bottom line is, there's only so many different ways you can defend against a grab, a choke, or a punch. In saying that, when I drop back here, when I roll this up this way here, now I got his attention. So again, from this position here, I'm going to drop this at the same time. Same time I drop this, I'm going to hear it here, then I'm going to rotate that. Now, from that position there, I'm going to strike at a point right here. I don't want to strike blindly. Nothing's going to happen. I want to take this foot, a pivot point, as I drop this and that systematically at there. Now I use angle of cancellation in this position. When I cancel on that 45, just freeze for a second. When I cancel on that 45, this is going to ricochet. So I'm using boral force. As quickly as this is canceling that, it's now going to pivot back up to that point here. The point back up here is at the, right, at the uh, level with the Adam's apple. It's called stomach 9 and the stomach 10. So those points have to be hit up in an angle. Unlike the one I was showing you last week or last month on snapping twig, the point was at a straight across. That was a different point, horizontal point, called large intestine 18. So this one has to be hit up. If I just do this, it doesn't, nothing. He, he feels that effect. I'm just going to tap just lightly, two-way action, that way there. So that's the motion. So, sorry about that. Sorry. So if he's facing me, again, I want to cancel this and this, dropping back, rotating up, dropping down, clear, and coming back up. That's the motion. So that's what I would use in the base technique, employing two-way action. The angle I'm hitting here, again, I'm not hitting, you can resist. I don't want to hit that way, I want to use this action. See the two-way action? This. That way there. That's the result you get. And if I was using this and this at the same time, that's the motion you're going to get. 
I barely touch him lightly, but he can feel that. Right at the level of the umbilicus, your belly button, two fingers away, it's large intestine, uh, point here, uh, our alarm point, stomach 25, alarm point for large intestine. Two finger breaths over from that on that same parallel line is spleen 15. I'm just spleening it to you now. <laughs> so this one here needs to be, makes it most effect needs to be hit in and up. In and up. At the same time I'm doing this, I'm, I'm anchoring this at the same time. So I'm not doing this and this, that's constipated. I want to make sure I hit both at the same time. That's the effect you're going to get. Now if you're grabbing, much more effective. From that position there, this one complements this one because they're what we call loud connecting. You have spleen, you have stomach. They both represent the earth element. You don't need to know that. All I need to know is if I hit this one this way, it's going to activate that one. If I hit that one that way, it's going to indirectly activate that one. That's how it works systematically. Okay? Remember, it's the right level at the right time with the right distance, the right penetration, the right timing will give you the right result you need to get the right result you need. Okay, that's basically how it works. Now, if I bring in a different body type, that was Mr. Terry Tate, this guy here, my bodyguard, this is John Soule, so he is uh, a black belt here, he's also a bouncer, uh, weightlifter, uh, you name it. He's done it all in real life. We just play this, he does it in real life. So uh, last month I had another gentleman in, maybe a little bit taller than John. John's about what, 6'4", John? Yes, sir. That's standing up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so again, he comes, if he grabs me here, now here's one way you can get out of this quickly. Let go for a second. That's one way out of it. Somebody that big grabs you, you want to tell him let go and you want to run as fast as you can. A little Facebook humor. But walking through the same thing, I love your tattoo by the way, thank you sir. Same thing applies. If I just grab a big guy like this and he's got a good grip on me, I'm not worried about that punch. I'm just worried about this big guy, right? So, if I just grab this and do that, oh, it's never going to work. So what I want to employ, let go again, is again the two-way action. I want this and I want this. I want all this working together. So if he grabs, if I torque this this way, now I'll show you the point that I'm doing on it. I'm going to come up here two-way action and I elevate that. Now I got that to work. Feel agree? Yes, sir. So I'm controlling three factors, height, weight, and depth, simultaneously. So in saying that, the point back here that I did on Mr. Terry, and I'm doing on Mr. John here now, this is called triple warmer 11. It's at the Golden Tendon Apparatus. So it's a rub point or a rolling point. I can hit this to the cow's home. Is this, John? Yes, sir. I gotta get you in a hole! Ugh. If I want to arm bar you, it's never going to work. Again, two-way action. I don't want just this. I want this working too. Nothing up my sleeve. These two knuckles, I'll just do it lightly this way. Roll this way here, and you can feel the result. If I roll deeper, John will hit the ground. I'm doing it lightly on John because I know he's been boxing. Okay? So, that's the point back there. It's a rolling point. But I can roll it this way too. Two-way action. If he's grabbing me again, I want to anchor this. Remember these two points. This is the anchor, and that's the anchor right there. Now, right from there, I hit John this way here to pull him. If I hit John, just not go for a second. If I hit John, boom, boom, boom. See that? But if I hit John in and down that way, oh, you feel that? Yes, sir. If I hit him John too hard, I don't want him to hit me back. <laughs> it's the same thing. Same principles apply that I did on Terry. Different body type, the same points. Some people are much more receptible to that point, especially when you're in contact, grabbing. Hitting that point there causes him borrowed force. So again, facing John, coming back this way, rolling up this way. As I anchor this back, boom, this way, when I clear, now see where John is? Now, I can't get to John on that other side. So I gotta modify, I gotta adjust the target. So all I would do is just strike this point here. It's called uh, gallbladder 20. Gallbladder 20 is usually hit in and up, but when he's down this way, I'm just going to tap lightly. That would be hit in, instead of in and up, in and down, just tapping like that. You can feel that, John? Sure. Yeah. So that, all I would do is modify that, if he's bent over, instead of coming back this way here, I just hit him that way there. Just alter the weapon, alter the target. So again, 
John grabs me this way. This is one. This is two. This is three. And that's four. That way. Sorry, John. Okay, so that's the base move off of Lone Kimono. Now, going back to Mr. Terry again. So a partial on the extension. So on the extension here, he grabs this way again. I guess we'll do it this way, yeah. On this angle here, yeah. So when I'm coming this way here, when I drop back this way here, this is the base move. If I want to change that to the extension, the extension happens at the beginning. From here, as I cut this out to an extended outward, I'm going to be striking this way into center line. This for him, compared to him, is a different point. This is at the base of the sternum, which is also the celiac plexus. <laughs> so when I hit that way, you see where he is? Stay right where you are. So I can just adjust from this position because I'm going to be moving up the circle to finish the move. Finishing the move when I come up the circle, I can have a couple different points. Triple one or 23, corner of the eye like I did in uh, snapping twig. Hit him on stomach five and I'll explain how that works. At the same time, I'm going to be tapping into spleen 11. Two thirds down from the inguinal crease, one, one third up from the knee. Now, in the extension, I see them a lot of them doing a side kick ineffective on the street and the angles wrong I would come this way here same time hitting that way sorry about that right? but the point is if I tap them like this energy doesn't work it's just take your jaw if I open it up boom he can feel that the problem the, the good thing is, is that when I'm coming up at the same time I'm hitting that my leg is up which changes the polarity of my body so now when my leg's up and I tap them there, you can feel that. So at the same time, I'm going to be hitting both at the same time. Yeah? So if you grab from here again, this is one, this is two. That's three. So that's how, are you okay? No, sir. So that's how that movement works. Because, again, like this point and that point, Lao connecting yin and yang, positive, negative, on spleen and stomach, it's the same principle on this technique, except this is now the spleen on the inside, and this is the stomach. That's the yin, that's the yang. But you're hitting them simultaneously, not one after the other, because there's a delay mechanism there. So it's the same time. And you're, again, a tremendous amount of torque when you're hitting that. Okay? So, on a different person, much bigger. Yeah, I like your shirt, by the way. Thanks, sir. Where'd you get it? Well, my wife ordered it for me from Grim Frost Online. There you go. A little advertising. So if I was doing the same thing, coming back this way here, on John, when I turn John this way, see where his body is? I'm going to be hitting him a little bit differently <coughs> on that one. Look where he is. This one, stand back up, John. For him, because of his height difference from Terry, is on stomach, uh, uh, stomach 12, which is an alarm point, or conception 12, sorry, excuse me. Conception 12 is an alarm point for stomach. Anything center line is the primary source for all yin energy, which is the front of the body. Insides of the arms are more receptible, susceptible, inside the legs. That's the beauty when you hit anywhere on center line. Terry's is one more up at the celiac plexus, which is the relay station for the peripheral nervous or the, uh, the uh, uh, nervous system. Okay, well, I don't want to get too much into that. Autonomic nervous system, if you will. <coughs> But this one here, conception 12, is between the umbilicus, the belly button, and the uh, end of the sternum, right there. So again, I'm still on center line, but it makes these much more weaker. And you'll see in a second, if John just stands there, I'm just going to hit your leg, but resist. Now John resists. Now, if I tap him there, and he feels that, now when I kick there, oh, big difference. So when he grabs me here, if I roll this way, turn the center line, now I hit there. Oh, sorry. Okay. Feel that? Yes, sir. Again, tap, keep closed. My foot's down, tapping, tapping. Lift up my foot, tapping. Oh, that's the difference. Imagine if, same time, I was hitting here or the corner of the eye, which is much more dangerous than hitting here. Okay? So again, John's right in this more this way, bit, John. Yes, sir. So again, if his arm beat me to be in a, be in, to shoot the punch, and I cross, now I have what we call cross extensive reflex. Which means, when these two cross, the brain has no idea where the arm and the leg went to. It has no idea. So from that point there, it's much easier to pull John 
to this position. If John's standing up and he has his arm right here, and I try to move that arm, he's resisting, I can't do anything with it. But as soon as that arm crosses, it becomes much more weaker. Much easier to pull John down. Because the brain, the corpus callosum, this side works this side of the body, this side works this side of the body. As soon as John grabbed out, he was faster beating me to the punch, and the punch came. As soon as this crosses over here, the brain has no idea where that leg went to that arm for the moment. Isn't that amazing, John? John had no idea. He said, what's going on here? <laughs> all right? So all I want to do is do this, and then I just want to run because he's much bigger than me. All right? Thanks, John. So, so almost. So again, rolling this way here, turning this way here. See where I struck him? That's the motion. Oh, oh. And then I can move. Okay? So now you have a different mechanism that you can work with, not just from a push, which snapping twig could be a push or a grab. You can do the same thing with lone kimono. Okay? Again, if he punched, if he beat me to the punch to beat it to meet it, and the punch came in and crossed, for that moment the brain has no idea. I can roll him to this position here and just rub on that and take him down to the ground. Okay? <laughs> I'm doing it easy. <laughs> but just so he sees and he's a big strong guy. Trust me. Okay, so these are just little principles that you can employ and add into what you're doing. Okay? Thank you, John. Sir. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you out there soon. Cheerio.